What's up guys, welcome back to The Hangar. Today I've gotta to do an oil change and I figured it would be a good time for me to talk about not only the cost of maintenance, but the cost of aircraft ownership. It's been requested a ton of times in the comments, so I figured today's my day, let's address that. Let's get into what it costs to own an airplane. I'm Trent Palmer, I fly drones for a living and bush planes for fun. Follow along as I journey off the beaten path of aviation. All right, guys, now that we got the oil changed, it's time for me to dive into this. Now, full transparency here, I have been avoiding this video for a while, mainly because I don't even wanna know the numbers. I'm someone that likes to turn a blind eye to when things are very expensive. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Having an airplane is a lot more expensive than not having an airplane, so if you're hoping I'm gonna like change your mind on that, that's not gonna happen. Also, there's a lot of different ways that people will evaluate costs that go into an airplane and how to factor an hourly rate. There's things like fixed costs like a hangar rent, and then there's operating costs that would be like gas and oil, and then there's reserve costs, which would be like saving up for your next engine overhaul, your tire replacement, all the wear and tear items would kind of be money you would put aside in a reserve area so that when an expensive thing comes up, you have money for that. Now, full disclosure, I have never done this math before. I just try to avoid it. So I'm not gonna be super accurate with it because I don't think it really helps. Anywhere you are in the country, any time of the year, you're gonna have different costs just starting from fuel and oil, but obviously hangar rent and every different airplane is gonna vary drastically. So we'll start this off with aircraft acquisition. The, the first big cost that people are looking at if you're thinking about getting into an airplane is buying the actual airplane. Now again, full transparency, I bought in a different day and age. When I was looking for an airplane, there was a ton of inventory on the market, especially Kit Fox wise, there were so many of them out there that it was a buyer's market. I was able to get this one for 39 grand, which was basically a steal. And since then, obviously, I've, I've pretty much rebuilt the whole plane. But that said, there are many affordable options and affordable ways to get into an airplane. I have friends that are flying airplanes that they bought for $20,000 and they go out and have a great time. But anyway, there's a ton of ways to uh, get into an aircraft, whether it be a partnership or buying one with a loan or something like that. They have awesome financing for airplanes that's a longer term than a car one. So it, normally the payments aren't horrible. But yeah, that covers the first part of just the acquisition stage. I paid 39 grand at this point. I have no idea how much I have into it. Uh, a lot more than that, but hopefully it's worth at least as much as I have into it. And that is the other thing I did want to touch on. Airplanes as a whole tend to appreciate, unlike cars, when you drive one off the lot that you lose $10,000 on it. When you buy a used aircraft, for the most part, they hold their value pretty dang well, if not appreciate. So from that sense, as long as you maintain it, it's a fairly sound investment. Now moving our way into operational costs. So for my plane, again, it's a very simple airplane. It's not complex, high performance, any of that. It's just run of the mill, fixed gear, single engine aircraft. And it's running a Rotax. So my fuel burn at the speed I typically cruise at is about five gallons per hour. Now I can run car gas or aviation gas. Car gas right now, I believe for 91 is in the $3 range. Av gas is in the $5 range around here, so we'll just round to the middle and say about $4 per gallon. I'm burning five gallons per hour. That's gonna put me at about 20 bucks an hour in fuel. Now outside of that, there's not much else that goes into the engine. Obviously oil, I do change my oil every 25 hours, and to do an oil change is about 63 bucks, 62 bucks. That ends up being about $2.50 an hour in oil change, so if you factor those two together, you end up at $22.50. 
Now really quickly, as we move away from the topic of the cost of aircraft maintenance, it is time that we talk about the cost of your own personal maintenance, which brings us to the sponsor of this video, Harry's. The idea of shaving has always been a nuisance to me. And then add to that when you go buy a razor that you're gonna use it a few times and then that blade goes dull and all of a sudden you're getting a horrible shave with razor burn and all that. And then you go back to get replacements, find that they're $35 and it's locked. You have to go get someone to even get, it's just a nightmare dealing with razors. The good news is it doesn't have to be that way anymore thanks to Harry's. Now six years ago, Harry's founders Jeff and Andy were tired of overpaying for overpriced and overdesigned razors and they realized they weren't alone. Their answer? Start Harry's. Raise a bunch of money, buy a factory in Germany, and sell great blades for a fair price directly to millions of men. Harry sent me their starter set which includes a weighted handle with textured rubber grip, a five blade razor cartridge, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover to protect your blades while you're on the move. Now what's great about Harry's is refill started at about two dollars and they're great quality German engineered super sharp blades. And the convenience level is amazing since the blade refills are delivered right to your door. Honestly, the deal Harry's currently have on their trial set is amazing. You'll get everything you need for a close, comfortable shave and you'll be supporting my channel by signing up. So go to harrys.com forward slash Trent to get your trial set for only $3. That's normally $13, so you're getting an awesome deal. And again, you're supporting my channel by doing so. Thanks again to Harry's for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. Now, the second section I like to break this into is fixed costs. Now, these things are completely independent of how many hours you put on the plane every year. The first fixed cost I'm gonna talk about is hangar. Now for me, I do like keeping my plane in a hangar. I do actually have the option to fold the wings and bring it home if I don't wanna pay for a hangar, I could put it in my garage. And that's actually one of the selling points for me of the kit box was that if I decided I hit a point where I wasn't flying all that much or I came on hard times money-wise, it would be something that I could offset the cost of the hangar by just bringing the plane home, which is a nice feature. But basically I pay 300 a month for rent here. It's a pretty good deal for the field I'm at, but that's gonna vary depending on where you are in the country and how many hangars are even open. Cause a lot of airports these days, it's really hard to find hangar space. Now the second thing would be insurance. Now, again, full disclosure, my insurance is probably a lot higher than most others. The reason being, I am at the highest end of the, the price bracket that any insurance would even allow for a kit fox, because most kit foxes, at least the older ones, are a lot less expensive than what I've now put into mine. So I have it as a claimed whole value of 125 grand, and right there, that sifted out a whole bunch of providers. Didn't wanna uh, even cover me. And the other thing, I did fully disclose to my insurance broker that I do a lot of off-field landings. And I know most policies don't exclude that, but I just wanted to make sure that, look, if I go out and have any issue when I'm out there, I wanna be covered. So um, I think that actually sifted out every other insurance provider aside from one. So I'm now at about 2,400 a year or 200 a month just in insurance. Insurance is one of those things that it sucks paying for it, but it really sucks even more not having it. But uh, again, this is an experimental aircraft. It is tailwheel. Those are two things that ding it pretty bad when it comes to insurance. Now the third and really last fixed cost is subscriptions for Garmin Pilot or ForeFlight. I'm a Garmin guy, so I've got Garmin Pilot. And that's about 200 a year I think I pay for the overall subscription to have all those databases and all the updates. And the one last thing is your annual inspection or on an experimental, an annual condition inspection which is a lot cheaper because it's just done with an AMP mechanic and not an IA. And I normally spend, I think, around 500 bucks on that inspection every year. It's something that I get a mechanic friend to help me out with and I go through the whole plane and I work with him. So that's not a super expensive cost. Again, certified aircraft, that's gonna vary drastically. It totally depends on if you have retracts, you know, complex, multi, all of that is going to add to it. I've heard horror stories of people coming out of annual having to pay, you know, 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars. And luckily with the experimental, normally that's not the case. So it's a little cheaper on that front. So total for the year in fixed costs, which again, this is why I didn't want to do this, but it looks like we're about 3,600 for hangar rent, 2,400 for insurance. That puts me at six grand right there. 500 for the annual condition inspection and then 200 for the maps. So that puts me at a whopping total of $6,700 in fixed costs. Now again, since the fixed costs are totally separate from your operating costs, the cost per hour actually goes down the more you fly when you look at it from that standpoint. Now, I fly about 150 hours a year. The average private pilot flies, I think, about 50 hours a year. So we're gonna factor that I'm about three times as much as the average private pilot here in the United States. So when we take that $6,700 fixed cost and divide it by 150 hours, that leaves us at about $44 an hour in that fixed cost. Now add that to the 2250 that are my operating costs and that puts me at about 6650 per hour to fly my plane. Now this is where it gets a little more confusing because a lot of pilots like to factor for overhauls and 
you know, wear and tear and replacement parts or upgrading avionics, any of that, that would be kind of considered a reserve cost. That's saying, I'm gonna put money aside for every hour, knowing that at this amount of hours, I'm gonna have to pay for something that's large. Now, I was looking at doing the math for this, but there's, again, just too many variables. The 915 that I'm flying, that brand new engine, is so new that I actually haven't been able to find a true number for what an overhaul would cost, because I don't know if there's been anyone in the GA market that's pushed it through TBO. Now, TBO, time between overhauls, on this engine is currently set at 1200, but the plan is once there's enough fleet hours out there, it'll go up to 2000. So right there, that change between 1200 and 2000 is a pretty wide spread if you're trying to factor for an hourly rate. But it probably wouldn't hurt if you threw an extra $50 an hour off to the side and said, that's my rainy day fund. When something goes wrong with the plane, I will be able to pay for that. Because again, there are so many little things, wear and tear items, tires wear out. And again, tires being so vastly different in cost and wear times that I don't even want to do the math on it. My first set of 29 inch bush wheels I went through in about 300 hours landing almost exclusively on pavement. So that cost me about 10 dollars an hour given that the set was almost three thousand dollars if i was flying off grass or dirt like i plan on doing i hear of people going well north of a thousand hours and all of a sudden that cost got dropped down to about three dollars an hour so anyway i'm going back to the overall cost that i plan for and see is that about 66 dollars an hour covers all my fixed and operating costs anyway guys that is enough of numbers and math so I'm gonna wrap this one up here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it lent a little bit of insight to someone that's thinking about buying an airplane and wondering what the rough costs are. Again, I'm not saying these are concrete and I know you guys are gonna chew me up in the comments for it, but I'm okay with that. So you know the drill, like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. See you on the next one, peace.